Well, hello, my loves, and happy Sunday to you. I hope your Sunday is going well. All right. I am really excited about this page. Um, I have a, a plan. This week I have a plan. Um, and really not a huge plan, but I have been working on a new uh, or new content that's going into the membership, but that's also going to be um, a new workshop and it's called mixed media mantras i'm in love with what we did and the content i just it was so good for the soul um but because and i, I think you can kind of the, my studio is just it's a good mess um i have we did a lot of collage paper and a collage work in this in this content and so i have stacks i wish you i you don't need to see this mess right here. It's just stacked up, seriously, like right here, full of collage paper. So I wanted to just tear and put them down. And um, so super excited about that. I have a lot of collage paper that I'm going to be continuing to use. Um, and I also created a collage paper um, that is going to be in the subscriber library now. I'm hoping that by the time you see this video, the new subscriber library will be active. If not, um, it, it'll just be in the, the old subscriber library. <clears throat> so if you're going to the subscriber library, you might have to re-sign up because it's on a different platform and everything. It's on the platform with my workshops. So anyway just FYI for that but this really fun yummy like number grungy numbers mm -hmm. so okay <clears throat> let's take a look at what I've done so far and then we'll kind of recap it a little bit with the the meaning behind it okay so here's my look at this grungy goodness it's just grungy that's all I can say. I slapped down whatever paper I could find. I just grabbed and put down. And I wanted those little bits of color and little bits of paper and different things like that to show through. I knew I was going to do it dark. Um, and then, um, so I put my papers down with some matte gel <clears throat> and a little bit of fluid matte medium to kind of make it go a little bit faster. And I had no plan as to what was going where. Um, then once that was dry, I came back with my Nova Color uh, Black Gesso, my Utrecht White Gesso, and some um, Raw Umber, and just made a mess. And then, and it was real thick and dry. I wasn't watering it down too much. And with a dry rag, I came back and pulled that and rubbed it and pulled it, and then spritzed some water on here to kind of pick it up to give it some water spots and different things like that. <clears throat> and um, that is all I have done so far. But you can see the bits underneath, and I love that. And really, I didn't even, like if none of them showed up, the texture of the paper is what um, really gives things some real grungy feel. I wanted the color to be real inconsistent. It's some brown, some gray, some light, some, you know, other things showing through. I wanted all of that because I just wanted it to feel grungy and old and worn and um, all of that. And so I love how it turned out. Um, and then I will, I'm going to kind of build on top of that my story and um, using more papers. I have a lot of them over here. I'm not exactly sure, you know, if I'm going to be using colored papers or what, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. I don't in anticipate using a ton of color um, because I do have color in paint. Like, I have pages of just really yummy, grungy, mm, good stuff. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and I do have some, like, real vintage -y pieces of paper out here. That I have uh, that I pulled like this piece right here. Look at this. I'm like, okay, how am I, I have to put this in? I have to. I have some old time cards. 
I have some postcards. I have all vin some vintage pages. I have some old envelopes, some ledger sheets. These are all vintage stuff. Um, along with some printed stuff as well. And I even have, like I have, oh, this one would look really good going with my thought process. Ooh, I like that. I've even got, I've got a lot of butterflies and stuff like that. So that, they might find their way in. Um, I don't know yet, but this is a for sure. Like I hope it's so fragile. Oh, okay. All right. So that's kind of my plan um, from here forward. <clears throat> okay. So a um, couple of things real quick before we continue on. Um, I just really, really want to say thank you for, um, you wouldn't believe the overwhelming notes that I received either on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or directly in my inbox of your love and your care and your prayers and all your thoughts, your good thoughts, all of it, all of it. Um, just touched me and seriously brought me to tears several times um, over the last week, I think it's been. Um, and so I'm just, I'm so incredibly grateful for this community and for the um, kindness and hope and courage and love that is within um, our community. And I am really grateful that you guys shared your stories. I, I mean, I get, uh, most of you share your stories, a um, I get them all the time. And I have a prayer book and I, I put your name down and I pray. And you know, that's my thing, that's my faith. But um, I just was incredibly blessed um, this week and could feel the good thoughts and the prayers and all the things. And so <clears throat> I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for that and for our, you know, prayers for our family as well. And um, I'm just so grateful. And that brings me to the word hope, because that is going to be the theme for this. I know this page right now, as dark it is, as it is, <clears throat> doesn't feel like hope. It feels a little bit like despair. And that's, that's part of this, this process for me for this journal page, is that out of despair, we can find hope. And... Um, I was reminded this week, <clears throat> whenever I feel like I'm struggling, I always go back to Edith Egger's book, The Gift. And I have referred to her book many, many, many times. And you can tell when it's dog-eared and it's marked and it's got tabs, you know it's a good one. Um, so I've referred to her words many times, but I always go back here because her story is incredible. She's a Auschwitz survivor and um, her story and how she's still alive today and the most amazing soul. And if there's anyone that would have a reason to feel despair or hopelessness or bitterness, or any of those things, this this lady would have that. But she's not that at all. And she's a licensed psychotherapist, and she helps people change their lives. And so she writes in, I mean, I was trying to decide which one fit best, because there's just so many nuggets of goodness. Um, <clears throat> but she writes, so I wrote down the definition of hope. Um, a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. And um, I think oftentimes, I know for me right now, um, hope, I can, I, I want to hope for this feeling to pass. And like I said last week, sometimes we have to sit in that uncomfortableness. Um, but, what, but what I've found too is that without even recognizing it, Sometimes hope rises up without us even thinking about it. But she writes, <clears throat> 
To ask how hope is possible in the face of dire realities is to confuse hope with idealism. Idealism is when you expect everything in life to be good and fair and easy. It's a defense mechanism, just like denial or delusion. And she says, I love this, she says, Honey, don't cover garlic with chocolate. It doesn't taste good. Likewise, there's no freedom, there's no freedom in denying reality. I want you to take that in for a second because there's no freedom in denying reality. Reality right now is, it's painful for me. It's painful for our family. And the sooner we admit that and sit with it and be with it and all of those kinds of things, there's a, a place for freedom to happen. Um, likewise, there's no freedom in denying reality or trying to cloak it in something sweet. And I've done that before. And um, it doesn't, it, it, do, it only creates more angst for me, for me. Hope isn't a distraction from darkness. It's a confrontation with darkness. And I, I've used this quote before, and every time I read it, I'm always like, oh. hope isn't a distraction from darkness. It's a confrontation with darkness. Oh, so good. I mean, the whole, th I could read the whole thing, but I won't. And then at the very end of this section, she writes, um, hope is the boldest act of imagination I know. Um, a willingness to cultivate within yourself whatever kindles light and to shine that light into the darkest places. Into the darkest places of ourselves, into the darkest places of the world, into the darkest places of another person. Hope is the boldest act of imagination I know. And so, reading that gives me hope. And the small acts of your kindness this week has given me hope. And um, our family is feeling that hope as well. And so, that's what this page is about. It's about hope. And um, the wild imagination that we can be hopeful and joyful and um, rest in knowing that we'll all be okay through our dark times and our despair. There is hope. So my loves, that is my inspiration and that's where I'm gonna go right now. I'm going to create some hope on my page. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday and I hope that you always, always know that you are loved. <laughs>